Hey, Snackers. Uh, Matt Napoli here. I'm a manager with the Cisco DevNet program. And this is Kareem. I'm part of the DevNet as a developer advocate. And welcome to episode five of DevNet Snack Minutes. If you haven't seen our previous ep episodes, DevNet Snack Minutes is your 10-minute all things Cisco DevNet, giving us a quick, fun way uh, to learn about APIs, coding, or just some cool stuff that's going on in the DevNet world. What are we talking about, Matt, today? Are we talking about Miraki SDK? Oh, you Please know it, Kareem. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wanted to follow your excellent episode about the the Cisco DNA Center Python SDK with a comparable uh, episode that covered the Meraki Python SDK. So what we're what we're looking at right now is the Meraki Developer Hub, um, and this is going to be everything that you need uh, for getting started with integrating with the Meraki platform. And if you're not familiar, Meraki is comparable, I guess, to Cisco DNA Center in that it is a uh, controller for Meraki networking devices. And uh, the only difference is, is that it's fully cloud managed right now. And so everything that you do with Meraki goes through the Meraki dashboard and you don't have to worry about managing your own on-premises software to, to use this controller. Uh, so that's the, that's the quick hit on, on the Meraki platform. But the thing that we're talking about today, and this will actually play off of what we learned in our uh, episode two, I believe, where we talked about the uh, Meraki V1 and the API documentation around that, is then implementing code with the, Pyth with the Python SDK. This is where we talked about the interactive API experience that we've built within Meraki, right? Exactly. And if you haven't seen it, this is that was a cool episode. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it, <laughs> uh, but that'll be our jumping off point um, because last time we actually went through the process of using the API docs to understand how we uh, interact with the Meraki organizations, the Meraki networks, and the Meraki devices. And we're going to do something similar today, but we're actually going to take what we did in the documentation and now move that into, into code. Um, so we'll just kind of get started from where we were before which is going through the documentation. And the first thing that you do, again, just kind of reiterating what we learned from episode two, is that we have to learn about what our, um, all of our organizations are that we have access to through our API. So again, Meraki is managed hierarchically um, and everything falls under an organization. And then we have networks and then we have devices. And so we're gonna go through and see what the code looks like through the Python SDK. From an organization perspective, how do I how do I get access to that? Do I need to somehow authenticate with with the Meraki, or are you going to provide me with a token or something? Because I know it's a little bit of a process when we're comparing DNAC um, to Meraki, but I, I'm thinking it's easier on the Meraki side, right? It is. It is a little bit easier. Uh, it's one. It's one main step instead of two. You do have to be an administrator within a Meraki organization to be able to use the APIs. Um, and then as a user, you're able to grab your um, API key within the Meraki dashboard. So once you have your API key, then you can use that for every API call you're going forward with. You don't have to go through this, um, you know, pre-flight check where you, you send in your username and password like you do with Cisco DNA Center. So good, yeah, good question on that. And we'll see that API key in, interactive, in the interactive documents and then in the Python SDK. Um, so our first thing that we need to do is identify the organization ID that we're going to be working with. And so um, in, using the, in using the REST APIs and using the Python SDK, the first thing I'm going to do as a developer is go to that API call that I'm going to be working with in the docs. Now, last time we went through filling out all of the query parameters and all that fun stuff uh, to make that work. But this time, I'm going to head to the template section, and this is where all of the cool full magic occurs. And we are going to be looking at the Meraki Python library. If you're familiar with some other platforms like using curl or Python requests or Node.js requests, those things can also be um, leveraged through the code samples as well. But with the Meraki Python SDK, um, it actually makes things a little bit uh, more easy. It handles things for you like um, error handling. Uh, so if you run into a, a 400 error or something like that, it'll handle that for you. Um, if you're having a bad authorization um, API key, it'll, it'll handle that for you. Um, but the big point, and this is where it comes into play, is that the 
Meraki API has a rate limit to it, and a lot of people hit that when they're starting to work with the API. What's the rate limit, man? I think it's about five calls per second. Um, so if you're doing some pretty weighty stuff, uh, you may hit that that pretty quickly. Um, so the SDK will handle that for you. You don't have to worry about implementing that in your own code. Uh, but the really cool part is we're able to actually copy this code from the documentation, and then I'm going to head over to my editor real quick and paste that in. Um, we can either handle our API key uh, in code, but as we've learned before, that's probably not the best way to do it. Um, we can also set it in our um, environment variables, which I did beforehand. So if we do echo Meraki dashboard API key, I already have it set up in my environment variable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the path and actually remove it for me because the SDK actually goes and checks my environment variables first when it does the uh, instantiation of the object for the API. So um, we are importing the Meraki library. I've already installed it as part of this virtual environment, so you didn't have to watch me do that. And then we're instantiating that with Meraki.dashboard API and then saving that as an object dashboard. And this is just a simple pip install the the SDK. There's nothing nothing too special about getting the SDK in, right? Yeah, pip install Meraki. It's pretty quick hit. It's uh, an intuitive, which is nice. Um, there is documentation to show this, but once I have the um, once I have the object instantiated, I can then hit that level that I'm looking at. So our first object that we want to tie into, or our first attribute, is the organizations. And I want to get my list of organizations from that API call. And then I'm just going to print out the response as part of this first, um, first demonstration. So how is, while you're doing this, Matt, how is the, the, the data object coming back in from the SDK itself? Is it coming back as a JSON and we have to handle that, or how does it work? Um, it is coming back as a um, Python dictionary. Is uh, just just like we saw with Cisco DNA Center um, with the with that Python SDK, and it makes it way easier to parse this information out. I don't have to do that uh, deserialization of the JSON, and uh, you know I don't have to reserialize it when I'm sending it back up uh, if I'm doing any posts or put requests. But uh, I do want to call something out because I saw this happen, and this was just by accident. Um, but we did hit a 429 too many requests, and I didn't have to worry about handling that in my code. The SDK did it for me and then remade the call for me uh, when it hit that error. Uh, so now I got the API call back and I got all of the networks that are or organizations that are available to me. Now, if I want to parse that out then um, and get down to the networks, and this is going to get a little dicey because I'm actually coding on the fly, uh, but we can do uh, for org in response and we want to print out the uh, the name, let's do uh, print org and then the name. And that'll give us a nice list of the orgs that are available to us. So I'll just run that again and hopefully I wrote my Python correctly to make that work. And so we have our list of all the organizations this API key has access to. I was just wondering if you use tabs or spaces. Oh, oh, good question. Um, I use... Uh, I use tabs. Um, because I'm in VS Code, it puts in four spaces for me, but yeah, I'm, I'm lazy. I don't, I don't really see the point in hitting spacebar four times. That's awesome, though. Like just, just seeing that, seeing how easy it is to be able to pull a list of, of organization using the SDK without even having to, to do my, you know, my get and parse my JSON and handle my response and make sure that I have the, the error code handled for me to make sure I'm not hitting a limit. Just one line of code that did all of that for me is pretty awesome, Matt. Yeah, and 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 I can just keep building on on that as well. So now that I have my organization, I can then uh, get my networks. And so I'll just instead of copying this whole thing, I have all the introductory code there. Um, I will just copy the get organization networks piece from that from that code, and we will head back into our little um, our little example here.
So instead of now uh, getting the organizations, I'm going to now get all of the networks that are part of all of the organizations that are in there. Um, and then we'll call it a day after that. So the thing that um, I can now hit is the uh, org sub ID. And we're getting all of the responses back. And again, coding on the fly is always a little scary, but um, we will give it a try. And so uh, let's actually print that response and see what that looks like. Oops. Fingers crossed. And so now what it's doing is it's calling all of the uh, networks and some of them are empty. And so that's why we got this list of, or uh, this Python dictionary of networks coming back for us. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a dictionary that we can, can parse out, um, but you'll notice that it's a list instead of a, um, sorry, it's a list that comes back and not a dictionary for this, but it's still Python related. Um, so then we, what we can do is we can do for um, network in response. Um, print, let's see, network, sub name, and it should give us the list in the, in the, for each one, as long as I didn't screw something up, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So for each organization, it'll print out the ones um, for us in a simple manner. So this last one, it gives us the whole set, but then we can parse those out. But you can see, you know, in the in the 10 minutes that we've been on here, I was able to write some um, pretty powerful code using the SDK um, and just really copying and pasting for the most part and doing some simple for loops. So. And not only that, but you can actually expand on that, right, Matt? So I can actually take this now and get a list of, since I have the network, I can go out, pull a list of all of my devices that belong to that network, and I can start playing with configuration. I can actually expand on that use case. So yeah, you can see that we're, it's kind of a, just an initial base to, to a larger story that you can easily tell with the SDK. So it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, you nailed it, buddy. Awesome. Well, thank you, Matt, for taking the time. This has uh, been very informative and uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Snackers, for joining us. Uh, join us for the next episode where we're going to be talking a little bit more and about certification and study group and how to get started with all of that. Thank you, Snackers. Thank you.